Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. You know, I noticed that when drummers come by the studio and you show them the finger drums, one thing that they have a hard time dealing with is that finger drums are often set up for, for the keyboard itself. So if we look at uh, someone playing the finger drums in a traditional environment, it may look something like this. And that's all well and good, but the problem is when you get onto your pads, the things are arranged chromatically, the pads are arranged chromatically, but the black keys and white keys have special significance for the way that the samples are outlined in a lot of software. So if we wanted to do a drum roll for our toms on the pads, it would look like this. And that just kind of doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. So today I'm gonna to show you how to remap the pads within Groove Agent and within any third party library so that you can actually have the pads be exactly what you wanted, like you saw at the top of the video. So let's just get into it. Okay, so we're here in Cubase and I have Groove Agent open, but if we load up uh, a different type of kit, like let's say we load up a kit from Beat Agent. So we come in here and we try the Beat Agent SE kits, oops. and just anything, uh, the dance kit. You'll notice that all we have to do is drag and drop the samples, and that's a nice thing about Beat Agent because it functions as a sampler a lot like battery or something like that. So. Well, if I wanted to switch snare and kick, I just have to drag the kick over here and they switch, so it's. And it would be nice if everything were that way, but the problem is that it's not. Uh, when you get into other modules, so we take a look at, let's say the kit SE, the highs and lows of life. You'll notice that that drab and, drag and drop behavior doesn't exist anymore. And so you're sort of stuck with these pads that don't really make sense. And drummers like to often have their right hand control the kick and their left hand control the snare but that's not how it's lined out because of the keyboard thing. And so it makes it a little bit wonky. Now there's a way that you can do this within Groove Agent, and I think this is like a suboptimal solution because it only works for Groove Agent, but I'm gonna show it to you just so you know it. It's pretty quick and dirty. So what you would do is you would use this little button right here, use hardware controller mapping on your uh, groove agent, and once it's selected and it's yellow, you can make this the snare if you want to. Oh, wait, no, so we're dealing with the kick. So we'd right click and we'd say, edit, learn, trigger notes. And we want these two to be the kick. The, and so that's D sharp one and C one. So we just hit that and then D one becomes the trigger note. Now we go back to the kick pad and we go to trigger note and we do add trigger note and we can have D one also be the kick. Now, So we see that that's working. Uh, now we want the snare. The snare has reverted to C1, but we also, also want D uh, C sharp one to be the snare. So we'll add trigger note, octave one, C sharp one. And then we have to remove this so we can you know, learn trigger note and then play something up here on the keyboard and it'll become A3. So with... Uh, so with that in mind, we can play this. And being able to assign the same hit to multiple pads is a real lifesaver when you're trying to do fast stuff like drum rolls. And not trying to do them on one pad. Having two pads, it just, it's a no-brainer. It makes life a lot easier. So that's one way to do it within Groove Agent. But here's the thing, you're not always going to be using Groove Agent. And so uh, perhaps a smarter way to do it would be within Cubase itself to do the transposition. And in order to do that, you'll need to use drum maps. So I'm gonna show you how that works with a third-party library. Because the thing is, if you use this method, the drum map method, you can use any library, whether it's Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer or Addictive Drums or Steven Slate Drums. I think I'll use Contact in this instance. 
So we'll just open up a contact instance. And I'll just choose the studio drummer. Uh, we'll just use the session kit or whatever. Wait for it to load. And so the way you do this with drum maps is you assign a drum map. Uh, you go into drum map setup. I'm gonna duplicate the GM map just because it's the one map that comes with your installation of Cubase. Now I have uh, all my drum maps saved here on my sample drive. So I've made drum maps for all this stuff, but I wanna show you if you're starting from scratch, this is uh, how it works. So you would do functions, new copy. I just don't wanna use the original GM map because I'll use that sometimes. So we'll work from the copy. And if you notice, this is the one thing about using drum maps that trips people up all the time. Uh, the GM map, its channel is 10. And the problem is uh, here in this editor, you have to do it one by one to change the channel to any or omni. I think Groove Agent works with an omni channel. Like it'll do all the MIDI channels, but uh, contact, it defaults to channel one. So if you want the drum map to be installed and you want it to make sound, you'll have to change your contact to channel 10 before you begin if you're using the GM map. That's just a quick tip to save you from pulling out your hair. Okay, and now we'll use the GM map too. And with that said, I mean, it'll work function normally. And it's functioning as it should, but what if we want to remap those keys so that the kicks are here and the snares are here? Well, that's easy enough. We just go into the drum map, we do drum map setup, and we see the input note is C1, but we'll change our output notes. So for C1 and C sharp one, we want it to be D1, which is the snare. So we'll just make that D1, we'll make this D1. And for D1 and D sharp one, we want that to be C1, which is the kick. And so before you know it, you have And so that's a very fast way to get the drums exactly the way you want them to be. You can actually rename these and resave the uh, drum maps and they'll save to your hard drive and you can pull them up whenever you want. Um, and so like a good example of this would be, so you have D sharp one, uh, the hi-hats on a standard map are like, uh, that's closed hat, that's pedal, and that's open hat. Well, those are far away from each other, if you look. So maybe you want to put those uh, here, like all on this row. So this could be close, that could be open, and these both could be uh, closed hat. So closed hat is F sharp. So we want F sharp and G to be closed hat. So G will be F sharp one. Okay, and now we want E and F to be uh, open hi-hat, which is A sharp one, and pedal hi-hat, which is G sharp one. So we'll make E G sharp one, and the open hi-hat is A sharp one. So we'll make this A sharp one. And before you know it, you have all of your hi-hats on the second row here. Uh, I mean, and that's maybe not your ideal situation, but uh, you can program it however you want. And that's the important thing to remember with these drum maps. Um, and so you're starting to get the idea of how the drum maps work, how you can reprogram your output notes and have the drum map do whatever you want. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, just so it doesn't uh, mess us up in the next part. But the one thing that the drum map mapping can't do is map multiple samples to the same pad. And 
I don't know if there's a better way to do this. If there is, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. But one way to do this with any uh, third-party library or Cubase library is to use a MIDI insert called Quarter. Okay, now this is a little bit intimidating and it's actually not in the manual. So uh, they did have an online thing in, to their credit. But there's three parameters here. You want the play style to be simultaneous. You want the chord style to be all keys. And then you want the layers to be single mode. And then that'll be how you would set this up for triggering multiple samples. Now let's just assume we wanted this, this tambourine here to hit every time the kick drum hit. Okay, so now we'll just hit learn with all keys in single mode selected and we'll have the C be these two together. So the C is mapped, we can take off learn and we'll hear it's playing two samples at a time. Now the problem with quarter is that you have to sort of build it out like a construction kit where only the keys you assign will be, you'll be able to hear while quarter is active. So if I play any of the rest of the kit, you see it doesn't work. But what if I wanted to make this uh, D sharp the same thing? Well, I would go back to learn and I would have that be this. So now both of these keys are a combination of uh, the tambourine and the kick drum. And then the next two could be the snare perhaps. So uh, D is the snare, so we'll have it learn D, D. And then we'll have it learn D sharp as just D. So now we have So now we have the snare and the kick mapped. Now what if we wanted these three to be the closed hi-hat? Well, that's easy enough. We just hit learn and we'll learn this as the closed hi-hat. And we'll learn this as the closed hi-hat and we'll learn this as the closed hi-hat. Now we'll unlearn and we got and you're starting to get something cool going with this quarter. Now the problem with quarter is that you'll have to build out everything, but the good thing about it is that you can make the pads however you want and you can have multiple samples from an acoustic kit uh, if you use this MIDI insert. So today we've covered three ways you can reassign drum pads within Cubase. You can do it at an instrument level with Groove Agent or whatever library you're working with if it supports it. Or from the program itself, you can change the drum map to map the output note to whatever you'd like to correspond to your pads. Or you can use the MIDI insert quarter and sort of build a construction kit with multiple samples or whatever you want and use that to remap your pads. Now you can save quarter presets within the uh, MIDI insert itself. And you can also save drum maps themselves or you can save them as a track preset. And I'm a big track preset fan just because it keeps everything sort of uh, kosher. But however you'd wanna save it, you can have sort of recall for this setup. And so you only have to really do it once or you can tweak it a million times, but uh, it's good to know that there's persistence for all this work that you're doing to get the pads exactly the way you want. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and hey, take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.